Hi. So I'm starting a new project and it's going to be to make the front axle wider. Now, if you look, my back spacing is set so that these wheels have a huge recess in here. And this means that the wheel is offset from the center line of the axis on which they turn. And this is a bit of a problem because the center line should be close to the center of the contact patch of the rubber on the road. And here, the center line actually goes and probably touches the road at this point. So the idea is to make the whole axle wider. And this is a very complicated and difficult project, so I have not touched the Jeep. I'm going to work on everything offline. I'm going to buy a completely separate set of used axles, and I'm going to work on those. And I'm going to make the axles off the Jeep, and then when everything is complete, I'm going to install it. And that way I can continue to drive the Jeep while I'm working on the axles. So I've gone ahead and bought a used front axle from an identical model Jeep Grand Cherokee 93 to 98. Here's the front axle. Uh, it's a low pinion axle and this one actually comes from a 98 Jeep 5.9 which has got a different pinion yoke but after swapping the pinion yoke you actually have an identical axle to the axle that I currently have in the Jeep. Um, with the exception that I have some off-the-market knuckles and not the original knuckles, but everything else on the axle is exactly the same. Now this axle was only $100, so I bought it for the purposes of taking measurements and if I need any parts from it, I can just take them off and so on. And there's a lot of used parts here which are in good condition, so this is an ideal place to start and for $100, um, it's excellent just to have a reference. This axle was slightly more expensive, it was $250, it's a high pinion axle, it's a, D30, a D30 just like the original Jeep axle, but it's a D30 with a pinion which is offset about 2 inches higher, so you can see the axle is upside, upside down, normally the pinion comes in about here, and you can see the pinion is actually above the center line of the axle tube. Because I'm trying to make a complete axle, the first thing I've got to do is actually remove the axle tubes. And this is extremely difficult. And there are a number of um, blogs online of people trying to remove the tubes and having a lot of difficulty with it. The first thing you've got to do is you've got to drill out these welds. Now these welds um, are extremely hard. And of course the reason they're hard is because welds cool very quickly and um, they've got a lot of impurities in them. And as a result, a weld can be some of one of the difficult, most difficult things to machine out. So I was stuck in how, and I wasn't going to proceed further on this project until I was sure that I could drill out these welds. And now that I've done that, I can actually go to the next step. But drilling out these welds is extremely difficult, and I'll show you how I did it. I tried a number of different ways of drilling out this weld. Um, I began with the idea, which I didn't think was going to work, but it was a worthwhile experiment just to see what would happen. I bought this tungsten carbide tipped concrete drill bit. And tungsten carbide is one of the most hardest materials known to man. It's almost as hard as diamond. Um, you can't sharpen these. Um, I've tried to sharpen it, and as you can see, I was able to make a little bit of a dent in the um, mounting material, but I didn't sharpen the tungsten carbide at all. What I managed to do was do a small amount of damage to my grinder. But I tried to go in this with impact and with the regular drill, um, with this hand drill. And this is a seven, 7 amp hand drill, and I put it on impact, and what I did was make a small crater in the weld, but I wasn't able to actually do any real penetration. Um, the next thing I did try was, was with a regular high-speed high speed steel uh, drill bit um, and that wouldn't even bite into the weld at all. It barely even made a scratch on the weld. The next thing I tried was this diamond tipped uh, hole saw. Now the diamond tipped hole saw does actually penetrate the weld and I did drill out the first weld with this. I went through two of these if you keep your pressure constant and you keep water on it all the time, in about an hour, I keep you know it, in an hour, it will draw through the weld. It moves so slowly that it's almost impossible to tell if it's moving at all. So this is not the best way of drilling the weld out the weld, even though these are very cheap and it does work, it takes forever. The next thing I tried was the 
uh, tungsten carbide tipped hole saw, hole saw, which looks very similar to this. Uh, I used a Lenox 7 8 inch tungsten carbide tipped hole saw. Now the tungsten carbide um, machines very well. Um, I decided to use a 7 inch hand saw. I drilled in and I got all, almost all the way through um, and then I actually snapped off the teeth of the, the tungsten carbide and the whole set and uh, I completely destroyed it. So then I actually went at it with uh, the diamond drill and I got the last last little uh, millimeter of material and then I got the drill down. It's also not the best way to do it. And I'm going for a 7 8 inch hole. So this is actually a 3 quarter, which would be in the wrong side. So that didn't work because I would have still had to drill some more. Now, this is a Lenox bimetal hole saw. Um, it's extremely hard and it's still sharp even after having drilled out two welds. Um, I actually damaged it uh, on a third weld. Um, but it's still sharp and I think this is the best way of drilling out these things. The problem with this is the amount of torque that it requires to turn it. The torque is so much that uh, even on the lowest speed setting with the highest gear ratio, a quarter, in, a quarter horsepower um, drill, press, drill press will not work. You have to have at least a half horsepower drill press in order to make this penetrate. Um, very similar is the Milwaukee biometal, which it seems to have the same amount of hardness. It's still sharp after drilling out a hole. Um, and it works very well. Both of these seem to work about the same. Um, and considering how hard the material is that I'm drilling into, I was very impressed by these holes. The only reservation I would have is the amount of torque it requires. I, I would, to do this job easily, I would really go for a, a one horsepower uh, drill press. The problem is a one horsepower drill press, you can't put all the way on the floor. You have to lift the axle up to meet the drill press. So getting a 10 inch drill press is ideal for me because I can leave the axle on the floor, the rest of it on planks, and then I can use put the, the, the drill press on the floor and that's how I draw them out. It still takes a good 10, 15, 20, I don't even time myself, but a long time to draw out each weld, but it does actually bite nicely and you can feel it actually penetrating into the metal. When you use the diamond tip, it penetrates so slowly that you can't actually feel it penetrating at all. You just have to wait and after many many minutes you see a very very small movement in depth. So the conclusion is basically that to drill out um, the welds you need a bar metal hole saw, a 7 8 inch. This is the Dyna 30 axle so with other axles you may need a larger. And you'll need sufficient torque, at least a half horsepower, one horsepower is better. The other thing you must be aware of is that a, a hand drill is useless for this operation. If you try and drill this out with a hand drill, it will work, but you'll easily break your bits. And um, it's uh, very difficult on the hands. It's going to rip the, the hand drill uh, out of your hands because of the torque. But uh, So uh, a drill press is essential for this. So now that I've got the welds drilled out, the next part, next part of the project is to disassemble the axle completely, um, to cut off the axle tubes, and then to rig it up in a drill, in a um, 20, ton, 20 ton harbor freight press, and to press out the axle tubes. So that will happen in our next episode. Woohoo! Thanks for watching.